Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today I want to talk about how to create this simple wavy pattern and turn it into a ring band. Are you ready? Let's get started. A lot of the jewelry look complicated. It's actually quite simple if we know how to dissect them and their structure. And let's take a look on the ghost view right here. As you can see, it is actually constructing by similar pattern, and but it seems has some sort of a rule to follow this pattern and to creating this form. So I'm going to show you from the scratch and you can design your own pattern. That's starting from the scratch. We are going to use the circle command to creating a ring and you wanted to make sure that it's the diameter for your ring size to be exact. Don't worry about the shrinkage because the polish will get rid of some material and then you will get it back to uh, whatever the ring size is. And I also wanted to offset this guy to be certain diameter. In this case, I'm going to set it for two right here on the top and then I'm just going to enter it and to get this one. This is the one that we are going to rebuild to get this wavy shape. The easiest way to get the wavy shape is by rebuilding this guy. Now, although we only do the top part, but we need to consider it's for the whole circle. First things first, on the degree here, make sure that you want it to have a degree three, so you will get a really smooth form. And then I'm going to change this one into 24, which I will have up and down for 12 section. If that is not enough, and we can bump it up for the higher number so your waving a pattern will be smaller. So I'm going to stay with 36 and see what this come out. Let's click OK first and then you will have something like that. What I wanted to do is turn on the control point and if you don't have that as a Rhino 7 when you click on it the control point will be on. You can come in here to use the points on command and then you click on here hit enter then you will get those points. So let's go ahead to zoom in and then I'm going to pick up one by one. Every other one on those control points, I'm going to pick it up. You can draw a window, you can click directly on it. Once you have it, you can either going up or going down by using the gumball 3D scale. And what I do is I'm holding my shift key while my gumball is on for the scale and I will get something like that. Now take a look on it and see if you like it. If you like this a little bit too point, if you feel like it's too pointed, you can always scale it back by choosing all those points. This is about the right size, but it's getting a little bit thinner. So I actually want a 3D scale up back to where it's about two millimeter there. Okay. So once I like it, I'm going to pick up the outside and then simply just extrude it. So we are gonna come into the solid, extrude it planar curve straight, and I wanna extrude it only one side, so both sides equal no, and each side is going to be one millimeter, and that's hit enter. All right, so now I have this, I would like to have them to be smoother on the edges. So I'm gonna use this command for fitted edges, and we wanna fit it for something really small, for example, like 0.25, and then we can select everybody so it will be a little bit rounder there. Once you have that, take a look and see if you like it. If you do like it, and watch out if sometimes you will have a fitted issue on the tight corner. But this one, if we click on it, it is showing it's a closed solid poly surface on my right side. So that will be fine. The second thing I wanted to do is, is I need to make a bunch of a duplication. So I'm going to using this command for linear array and I'm going to planning to do six of them. And then I'm going to have this one going up snapping endpoint to endpoint so they will be touching. All right, from my front view, we can see we have a 36 control point which creating 18 peak on there. So if you have 360 degree divided by 18, which means each of the peak is about 20 degree. All right, you can create as many as tight pattern you want within those 20 degree. In my case, I have six of them. So each of them is going to have a 20 divided by six. And I think that's not an even number. So I'm just gonna use five of them as an example. If I divide it by five, then 
every one I'm going to rotate in four degrees. So I'm going to delete this one. And for all of this, I'm going to rotate it four degree, just type it four here. So you can see they move a little bit. And those three, I'm going to move it another four degree. And those two, it's another four degree. And the very last one, it's another four degree. And you can continue to make it as complicated as possible you want. So take a look on this and see if this is what you like. Take a look on the render view and see if this is the pattern of what you like. If you like the pattern, and all you need to do is to Boolean union all of them together. All right. Now let's work on the bottom of the ring shank. For this ring shank right here, I'm going to creating a box and just cut it out the bottom part. So the box is right there. We are going to use a Boolean difference. This one will be difference out from here. Now we cut the bottom part. We're going to pick up this ring shank and we simply just going to extrude it into the solid. And then we can cut it out the bottom by using the Boolean difference, this one out of this one. So as you can see, we have the top part finished. On the bottom part, it depends on how you like for your design. I simply just going to creating a rectangle with the round corner and I'm going to start it from here and round it up close to what we have there. And you can see I creating this profile right there. Let's go ahead to mirror that to the other side. Snapping into the zero, holding your shift key. So then I have a two profile there. That's the first one. That's the second one. We can go ahead to using surface tool for sweep one rail. And this is your rail. And this is your cross section one. This is your cross section two. And we'll get something like this. Make sure that you align the point and the arrow facing the same direction and hit enter on it. Then we'll have this bottom one. Notice that the bottom one does is not a solid. So make sure that you use the cap command to close it. Then we'll have this one right there. Now notice that on my bottom is rounded, but on my top, it is the sharp corner as we didn't have a fit it on the top. Let's take a look on the render view, then it's easier to see what my point here. So what we wanted to do, go back to the ghost view. I would like to use the fillet edges, exactly the same fillet for inside of the ring shank on the top portion, and then we'll get something like this. You can make them two tone if you want to. You will just need to casting them in the separate piece and assemble each solder on where to join together. I hope you enjoy this video. I have a lot more tricks and tips that I wanted to share with you in my membership program. Join the membership and you are going to see a lot more of my secret. Thank you for watching and I will see you next.